take two. <laughs> we were filming this earlier. Uh, whenever <laughs> I got a, a phone call from, from the ATF, had to had to run out of the studio and, and go take care of some business. Um, and then this one, the good guys won, got some machine guns back. So, <laughs> like, no, 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 it's like an arms deal. They had a duffel bag. Like, I, I wanted to document it, but I didn't want to be that guy. Oh, you they, sure? They had a duffel bag, a green duffel bag, and it has like an M249 and a bunch of like MP5s and stuff. It's just, they're kind of cool, though, because now they have all these, uh, they have like ATF seizure tags on them, and I don't want to take them off the guns. Oh, you definitely leave them on. Yeah, it's pretty sick. So, yeah, we had to stop the podcast, so that's why this is... Fun times. Up, this is why this is uploaded late. Not because I'm incompetent this time, but because something came up. <laughs> so This time. Well, yeah, 90% <laughs> of the other time, it's just... It's a whole thing. Failure. Failure yeah. laugh. As long as it gets uploaded, I suppose you're winning. We've, we've not had one go too far and we've consistently done it where well, well, this is 34 is it so today's podcast is all about the cartridge 22 creedmoor for those of you who don't know it's a creedmoor in 22 <laughs> it's a 22 cal creedmoor yeah <laughs> so uh you know di- disclaimer out of the way our 308 300 win mag we throw our 260 guys under the bus yeah i mean i like 260 why it's effectively six five grade more. Yeah. I mean just not 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 good enough for longer bullets, but, no. but, but you know, if you're using a cartridge that was uh, born in the last century, you know, <laughs> before we, ha- when we, we if you're using a cartridge that uh was made when carburetors were a thing, oh it could be a little outdated, maybe. If it was pre carburetor pre engines. If your if your cartridge <laughs> was designed before we put a man on the moon, no. this podcast probably isn't for you. Before vehicles, <laughs> if your cartridge was made when America was still on the gold standard, <laughs> oh goodness, that's probably gonna get some love. Probably a little bit, maybe. Yeah, we we laughed. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. But anyway, times. this is you know we're we're talking we're talking modern advancement here. We're talking. Yes. Formula Real One, talk. talking <laughs> stuff that goes fast, flies straight, uh, stuff that uh, I don't know doesn't get carried away by the wind. You know, these are facts. So before we get started, disclaimer: anything talked about reloading wise, velocities wise, anything else, take it with a grain of salt. Don't blow up your face and blame us. That's all I'm going to say about that. And to keep this at a manageable length of time. Uh, we're only going to hit like the wave tops. And what we did was we asked a question on TPH to kind of get a general consensus of the information people would like to hear and all that. And we're going to basically cap it as it pertains to information at probably around 88 gram projectiles because I still need to test the nineties. I haven't made it there yet. It's people don't understand. This is literally five, six years worth of testing. Yeah. And uh new powders come out. Brass has gotten better in some aspects. Uh, different primers have been tested. Like it's, it's it's literally pages upon pages of data to get to where I'm at now. And I still want to get into the 90 grain projectiles, and I've just been waiting on more brass to become available and all that stuff. Because I, I like to test, as it pertains to testing, I like to test not only the projectiles, the projectiles and different brass and so on and so forth. Like it's super extensive. takes a long time to get through this stuff, but eventually hoping within an, another year, it's probably what it's going to take. I'll be able to publish a book on it. And it's going to be like a complete guide to 22 Creed, uh, from reloading stuff to kind of some of the information we're going to get into today. And another thing I need to circle back around to for the Can book, I be your ghost writer. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Is semi-automatic. Tell that's my mom be, I wrote a book. <laughs> that's going to be our first subject of this podcast is semi-automatic. Now, going back to when this kind of 22 grade really hit the scene, running pretty hard. Uh, we grabbed up some semi-automatic platforms, AR-10 platforms, and I was so not impressed with it uh, that we don't even load MO4 that's friendly for semi-automatic. Now, What's transpired over the past five years is there's people that claim to have figured it out to where it's a little bit better. You're never going to get the same amount of velocity out of a semi-auto platform as you will a boat gun platform. But 
I'm going to reach out to DNA here pretty soon and try and buy one of his semi-auto platforms, his AR-10 platforms, and give it another go. Because, I mean, like I said, a lot of things have changed over the past five, six years. A lot of new powders are on the scene that work even better. Uh, people have gotten brass figured out even better. So, you know. Yeah, so I, think, I mean, cover that a little bit more in depth. Like, it's pretty, I mean, pretty well established. You're always going to, with most cartridges, you're going to find signs of overpressurization. Yeah much sooner on a semi-auto than you are a bolt gun. It's just part of the nature of the beast. But it seems like with 22 Creed, it was excessively. Very excessive in the beginning. Now, you know, it could be, it could be the fact that there was so many different, in the very beginning when I first started doing lots of testing on this cartridge, there were so many different chamber designs and uh, there were some companies having trouble with the brass and everything else. That could have been part of it. But I'm talking like severely, and I don't recall the exact numbers, but those those early, I mean, they might have been some of the first semi-autos chambered 20 to create. I have no idea. Severely, like, it was terrible. It wasn't even worth, it wasn't even worth loading for. Yeah. Like that. And we, Jesus Christ. But here's the deal. You ready? Why do you need a semi-auto in 22 create? I know. You know, because especially as it pertains to 22 caliber Wildcats, like high velocity 22 cal Wildcats, that's kind of the point of having a you know, uh, high velocity 22 caliber wildcat is to run that bitch wide open. Yeah. So why would you want to put that particular setup into a semi auto platform that flies killing me? <laughs> but again, I'm just not going to talk about it. I don't recommend it. And again, I'm going to circle back around to it, get a new platform DNA, uh, get one of those, do some more testing and I'll let you know my thoughts to, you know, after I've done the testing. And like I said, it's probably, you're probably still going to be looking at about a year on a complete guide to 22 Creed. And probably a year after that, we're going to do a complete guide to six arc. Cause I'm kind of basically right behind the 22 Creed with the six arc data at this point. Yeah. Multiple, multiple, multiple pages of data. I'm already, I already have a, I have the, the aesthetic in my head. <laughs> it's not going to be like these typical, I know a lot of you, you white trash folk, you go out and you put book, you put books out in their soft cover. You know, there's no cohesive uh, narrative through the books in terms of <laughs> the styling. And then when you put them on the bookshelf, they don't all look the same. These aren't going to be that. <laughs> so, you know, before you get into your questions, I'm going to, I'm going to use this word, I'm gonna use this word again, and hopefully you now know what it means. I want you to elevate or pitch me 22 Creed. Here we go. <laughs> when, why, like why, why 22 Creed? I'm some random guy. And somebody's like, you need like, or everybody's been saying I need a 22 Creed. What do you think? You know, you can't ask me this question. Yeah. Cause you're I'm too, talk for 20 I'm minutes. Too, exactly. I'm too thorough. I can't just be like, well, you gotta have one because that may not be true. What does it excel at? It excels at flat shooting, hard hitting. You want flat shooting beyond 200 yards. You want hard hitting beyond 200 yards. You want it to carry that velocity and energy further down range than a typical 22 to 50 will do. 22 creeds your thing. And the whole cost aspect, especially nowadays, projectiles. 22 cal projectiles are always cheaper than 6 millimeter, 6.5, so on and so forth. So, I mean, those are kind of my two. If you're requiring that I answer this quickly, those are my two main things. Like when people when people talk about flat shooting, they always you know use phrases like laser. It's a laser beam. It's a laser beam out to eight hundred <laughs> or whatever. Um, I always find that funny. But like, what does what does that really mean effectively for me? Like, you know. So, without going too crazy, you don't have to go just like yet. specifics. I don't need like mills or twenty two two fifty is a great gun for two hundred yards and in. You can really stretch it out. Like with the the standard offering, which is probably typically a 55 grain projectile 250 yards it's pretty lethal but your shot place better be pretty ideal whereas the 22 creed three 400 yards now flat shooting is kind of in the eyes of beholder i found that with my 24 inch one in 10 twist shooting 70 grainers at 3750 it was fairly flat to like 350 ish yeah so I, i'm basically i'm pushing my range out further for flat shooting, like legit flat shooting, like high, hold high shoulder type stuff, and you're still going to dispatch a coyote at 350. Uh, 
and then that downrange energy, which is way more than way more than like a fifty five grain twenty two fifty. And it's going to carry it even further because it's way higher BC projectile. Yeah. Now, this is where I'm going to like tell people, like if you're hunting these small, like Northeast Texas and East Texas places where the furthest shot you could ever possibly make is 200 yards. You don't need a 22 creed more. I'm not going to try and push one on you for that. Now, if you're hunting where that's even more open, or there's a caveat if you want a do it all caliber in that 22.224 caliber projectile, 22 Creed is a good one. Because there's a couple different ways you can go with this. Wide open country, you're gonna be you're gonna be able to shoot much coyotes much further. Or if you want a do it all cartridge that you can, you know, push you know, longer limits and lo- low recoil, 22 Creed more is great great option and for long range training there's a couple schools that have been swapping over 22 creed due to simply due to the fact cost and we're talking about the the cost of the projectile alone basically what they're saving because you're you're not as far as powder goes there's not much difference between powder charge weights from the 22 6 and 6 5 i mean yes there is a difference but it's not a lot yeah your cost savings in that particular scenario is coming from the low cost of the 22 caliber projectiles uh, from long range plinking and in the right setup it's fantastic at long range like you start you start breaking that beyond i'm gonna say like 80 88 90s all that there's pretty high bc projectiles and they are getting it out of like 24 26 inch barrels which is typically what you're gonna find like you know target shooting pra style and all that stuff now Again, I'm not going to try and sell you on nothing, but I will tell you, if you're just predator hunting inside 200 yards, 20 to 50 is going to be just fine. But if you want something that's more capable of taking larger game for low recoil and everything else, it's a great platform. Now, a big question I get very often is, why not 6 Creed? The answer to that is, once again, it depends. <laughs> you know? do you, do the best answer is, why not both? Exactly. That's what I like to say. But you're an addict, and I think I'm an addict now. Yes. So, before we go even further down the road, 22 Creed is still a hand loader, largely a hand loader's cartridge. Now, before COVID and all this crap happened, there was us, Gunworks, Cooper Creek, I believe, did some. Uh, uh, Horizon, isn't it Horizon? Had somebody loan some for them. Yeah. And your standard was like a 75 to 80 grain projectile load. I mean, that's pretty standard. And there may be more that manufactured it, but that was, you know, it was pretty pretty available. I know we sold a bunch of the Hornady Brass 75 grain boat to hollow point because it was very inexpensive to manufacture at the time. And that's all Predator Hunters wanted. And it was fantastic for that. Uh, we had other loads for, you know, deer and, you know, better quality, higher quality brass loads and all that. But... That was when the components are readily available and all that good stuff. Uh, did, I say, did I mention Gunworks? Yeah. But as it pertains nowadays, that's totally different. I don't know if anybody has any available. Uh, we have an announcement at the end of the podcast about that, as it pertains to that. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> yeah, the pretty much all your brass dried up. Yeah. Um, so whatever you had, yeah. that, was, that was it. So it's still largely a hand loader's uh, cartridge. And it also, so what hand loading will get you is there's still quite a few. I've noticed there's still a fair amount of different reamer, reamer designs on the market right now. It's getting better than it was. So when we first started messing with it, the reamer designs were kind of all over the place. And it kind of seems like people are starting to get standardized a little bit now, which I had heard rumors pre COVID that Horny was trying to standardize it and all that, which I wish they would. Because, you know, when they say we spec something, one, components become more available because they add it to their lineup Two, the semi spec uh chamber it it makes things way easier because like we may get like 10 different rifles and they may have three different chamber designs and it makes it hard for us to produce ammo that fits properly in all of them yeah uh but anyways still largely a hand loader's cartridge and if you like to hand load it's you can take six creed brass, six point five creed brass, neck them down. You can actually 
take a 22 to 50 cartridge and just a once fired cartridge is what I recommend. Next size it, put a projectile in there, jam the lands, and you can actually fire form 252, 22 crate. And again, do this at your own discretion. <laughs> but I've done it. Others have done it. It can be done. And then the, the cheapness of the projectiles, once again, that's just another big plus for 22 crate. And if you hand load, you can push it up to higher velocities. Because we're gonna we're gonna rub the edge a little because we're custom ammo company but you can only do so much because the 22 creed is known for building up carbon rings just like six creed we'll get into that a little bit later but going back to the why not six creed scenario so six creed great cartridge i love it uh, just as much 22 creed and when you compare them apples to apples say if i go Cindy grain projectile seven grain projectile i can actually get a higher bc projectile in the 224 projectile as opposed to six millimeter seven grain projectile now if you go apples apples say a 24 inch 110 24 inch 110 which would be ideal for those seven grain projectiles for the 22 and 6 creed you will easily outrun the 22 creed with a 6 creed by 100 feet per second now fastest to say four or five hundred the 6 creed is going to win Beyond that, the 22 Creed with its higher BC projectile is going to start overtaking it. So I guess it just kind of come down to what's your use case? Are you just shooting them 300 yards and in? Six Creed's great, especially in that 110 twist. And again, that's a hand loader's game right there because factory ammo, factory ammo for Six Creed is typically more of a long range type setup. You do have the Hornady 87 grain V Max, and we we haven't put out another while because we've been waiting on projectiles. We do a setting grain load, and there's a few other custom ammo companies that may do some lighter grain projectile loads. Most of your six Creed factory rifle is going to be seven and a half twist or seven and seven, somewhere around those ballpark. And you got to watch run those light grain projectiles at mock speeds because they all, it's absolutely way too many RPMs. But when you start talking about custom rifles, the uh, six Creed, super fun. 22 Creed, super fun. And both of those on custom rifles, custom barrels. If you're strictly doing varmint hunting, you're going to be hand loading anyway. So it's kind of like a dealer's choice. Uh, the six Creed is going to lend you a little bit better barrel life. But if you're running them up there at the higher end velocities, it's not going to be much. Like if you're, you're really leaning on, like I do like to do some of mine, <laughs> you're, you're not going to be buying yourself just a whole lot barrel life over the 22 Creed with the six Creed. That's just, it is what it is. They're hot rods. Uh, and while we're on the topic of barrel life, that was a question that got brought up. And I'll go ahead and say right now, I've seen anywhere from 800 rounds to I think my longest one so far is about 1,600 rounds for their kind of burn up. But I also, I never melt them bad boys down. Like the most, most shots I ever take consecutively is like five or six. And that's if there's five or six scouts. So I'm not melting them down. I am, however, on the one I got 800 rounds through, I was running just the hottest, like winter time only. Uh, if it was like a, if it was just a hair over 70 degrees, this blowing primers. That's how hot I was. I was standing on them really hard. I'm not going to say the velocity because it's quite stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but that that one, 800 rounds. And like I said, I never got a like molten hot. There was never like 10, 20, 30 shot strings. This is pretty heavy stainless steel barrel, and I have a, a pretty regimented cleaning regimen, I guess is what you'd say, for all of my rifles, especially the Creedmoors, because they tend to build up carbon rings quite easily, especially when you're unsuppressed, and we'll get into that in here in just a minute. But like I said, barrel life, 800, 12, 1,500 rounds. We might as well just call it 1,000 rounds. And that may not sound like a lot, but... How many of you shoot like I do? So, I, you know, that may be a lifetime worth of barrel wear for some people. Yeah. And it may be like one season for other people. <clears throat> well, know? I mean, if you consider how much an ammo cost you are yeah, a thousand rounds, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's new. It's that's, that's the whole tired argument about yeah. my hot rod. And if you're yeah. doing it, you don't really, I mean. Barrels are expendable. Yeah. I mean, that, that it's a consumable in my personal opinion. Yeah. Uh, if you're not burning out barrels, to me, in my personal opinion, you're not practicing enough. Because, I mean, I did the math at one time, and, you know, it slowed down a lot on the Creedmoors because of component availability. Like, every 
every little thing we get in for those types of cartridges goes to munitions nowadays. And I've stepped down to like 223 and 6 arc, like the super and Valkyrie, super efficient cartridges because of necessity. Yeah. But pre all that, for like, I figured it up at one time for every coyote I killed, it was something like I had shot 20 to 50 rounds, you know, in practice. So just, I mean, keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. Barrels are consumables. They're not that expensive. Well, it also provides you a great opportunity to change your setup too. Exactly. I mean, up. that's, and again, that's one good thing about these kind of things is like, you might find that the barrel you got, you don't particularly like that projectile. You want to run a ladder or have your projectile on it, you know. Yeah. It gives, it gives you some, length. Yeah. I mean. It gives you some uh, uh, good uh, good excuse to try something new. And I mean, you can just get a second rifle while all that bar- new barrel's getting done. Exactly. <laughs> so, one thing to keep in mind you can always do before you get off barrel life and all that is if you know you're buying a quote-unquote barrel burner and you shoot a lot, go ahead and have them do two barrels at the same time. It's it's that easy. Yeah. Uh, if you're if you're investing that kind of money into it and another barrel's not going to cost you that much, the good thing about doing them both at the same time is you're going to get pretty close to the same chamber design and everything else because that reamer, like it's one after another consecutively, whereas, you know, you may wait a year to get another one and that reamer may be wore down or it may be a new reamer or whatever. Your chamber design is going to be slightly different, but that's neither here nor there. Just something to think about. If you shoot a lot, get get more than one barrel at a time. On most actions, you could literally probably spin it off yourself if it's done properly. Spin it off yourself and you know put the new one on. It's yeah. not that big of a deal. Before we go any further uh, down this rabbit hole, I'm just kind of knocking out some of the questions. Cleaning regimen. 22 Creed will 100% develop a carbon ring, especially when you're suppressed. Depending on how hard you're running it and, and what the environment you're running it in, and definitely suppressed, it's going to build up a carbon ring, and you're going to start seeing pressure, whereas otherwise you wouldn't have. Had, wouldn't have. The best thing to do, if you reload every 50 rounds or you reload every 100 rounds, go ahead and clean the barrel then. Put some more foam in it, nylon brush it, 50, 60 strokes, you know, push some patches, a good quality barrel, couple shots, you're fouled back in. Now, when you say like carbon ring, a lot of people don't even realize what that is. Surprisingly, are you recording again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> when you say carbon ring, uh, here let me get straight. You say straight face. When you say carbon ring, uh, elaborate on that a little bit more for the for the people at home. So it's pretty common among. It's very common among calibers that people would typically call overbore, which is basically you take something like a 6.5 Creed case, neck it down to 22 cal. Like you're trying to force a lot of powder out of tiny hole. Yeah. Whereas like your 308 stuff like that, they're not as bad about it because it's it's not that small of a hole that's going through. Yeah. So carbon ring develops. Okay, basically it's just a ring of carbon that builds up. It's almost like, okay, my typical practice is anywhere from 30 to 60 thal off lands. Basically, you know, you're free. You have free bore, which is the the free area the projectile could travel before it, you know engages the lands, like the rifling, essentially. When your carbon ring builds up in there, it's just like as if you seated that bullet super long to where you're jamming it into the lands. So it's starting out with a pressure spike uh, right off the bat, and basically that's no good. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so you're, you're gonna start seeing signs of pressurization. Yeah, so I mean, so if you're already the, running a little hot, yeah, you're gonna with start. Degree, people typically run them on a hotter side. Yeah, and if you're already typically on the hotter side, and you're using a good temp stable powder, you should be good through pretty much all temperature ranges. But the minute you build up that good car ring, you're gonna start seeing pressure right off the bat. You're gonna get heavy bolt lift. You're gonna see a little stamp on the uh, brass from the ejector or mm-hmm. you know the ones that are kind of difficult to tell sometimes are the the mauser type actions that don't have your standard ejector any mauser style action basically the ejector is on the action instead of the bolt so those are the ones you really got to watch out for because they don't show that tall tail sign of the ejector swap on the brass so, and so just feel you'll know you'll get a heavy bolt lift that's first sign of you're getting a pressure spike whereas before if you weren't 
And like I said, if you have anywhere, I've seen it on some barrels. I've seen anywhere from 60 rounds and on my, most of my guns, it's one and eight twist. It's been around that hundred round mark, you know, uh, and like I said, most people reload 50 to hundred rounds. So go ahead and just clean the barrel. Every time you reload your ammo, clean the barrel. And if you don't reload, but every like three, 400 rounds, just go ahead and put it in your mind that you're cleaning it ever at least a hundred rounds, like at the most, because I've seen, I've seen this issue through a bunch of 22 Creed owners. Typically predator hunters don't like to clean their shit. Uh, Who likes to clean? I, nobody likes to clean their shit. I mean, I don't. Did he just walk off? <laughs> I don't like to clean it, but I also don't like to be out there hunting in my shit start blowing primers out. Get six coyotes on a single stand and the first shot. Oh, I'm going to run it. And t- like, <laughs> unless the bone's <laughs> blown out my face, I'm running it. <laughs> there, was, there was one night on a, on a 22 Creedmoor that yeah. I'd, this is what made me get really good about my cleaning regimen. It had, uh, it was kind of late spring. It was kind of getting pretty close to wrapping up predator hunting for the most part, late spring. And we it come in, got really warm that day and it was super high humidity, mm. which is a uh, basically when you're running stuff on the very top end, which I was, <laughs> yeah, cause it's you, uh, that's a recipe for disaster because what, especially when you're running suppressed, what happens is <laughs> number one, the heat, you know, a lot of people tote that powders are temp stable, but none of them actually are There's just some that are better than others. Yeah. So you've already got that increased velocity from the powder, but when there's high humidity, you're running a suppressor, the chamber, the barrel, everything like after a couple shots, it'll build up moisture inside. And that's a no good situation, <laughs> especially on something you're running upper end of velocity probably way too hot and it's got a good old carbon ring built up there. So, yeah every shot blowing primers i'd have to <laughs> drop the mag dump the primer out put it back in but it's all i had that night and you're like i really need to reassess my life <laughs> i was like at any moment this could come apart in my face but you know what shooting these fox is well worth it another question is it fur friendly no. <laughs> now, there are caveats to everything. Within the 1 in 10 twist and 1 in 9 twist and 1 in 12 twist rifles I built, beyond, say, most of them is about 150 to 200 yards and beyond. Absolutely fur friendly. Anything up close? Absolutely not. Now, most of the stuff with the 1 in 8 twist, it's a heavier projectile even more explody because <laughs> you got more weight behind it. Uh, most of the time, no, but again, there's also ranges at certain ranges. It becomes fur friendly, but don't get into a 22 Creed looking for a fur friendly option. Absolutely not. Even the lightweight projectiles. Cause we've got 12 twist, 10 twist, nine twist, eight twist, seven, seven and a half and six. It may be a six and a half. I don't remember. Uh, multiple rifles, multiple twist options. Never seen one be fur friendly. It is what it is. But even the 12 twist running the uh, 55s at like 4,000 pretty easily. I mean, you can probably get them faster, but I was kind of worried if I go any faster. Up close, it's just blowing like freaking softball size holes in them because it's so fast. And and if you want to download to where it is fur friendly, just shoot a 20 to 50. It makes yeah. no sense. Uh, you don't get into a 22 Creed looking for fur friendly. Jump down to the 22 Nozzler, 224 Valkyrie, 223, and even those, there's going to be situations where they're not fur friendly. So, again, to answer that question real fast, don't count on it. <laughs> you know, it's just not, it's going at such good velocities that it's just not a thing. Again, there are caveats to everything or certain whatever. Uh, next question was about reloading and neck tension. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter now, if you turn your, turn your neck. I knew you was going to say that. Uh, if, if I have to have any, I will not own anything that I have to turn neck on. It's that simple. You should listen to your elders <laughs> over there shooting ventress, Wayne. I'm hunting. I don't, and I can take my hunting, most of my hunting calibers that are for longer ranges and I can shoot long range with them. 
just as good as some of these bench rash rifles can, and I don't turn a goddamn neck one. Oh, I said it again. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Okay, reloading. I am not the guy to ask about reloading practices because I hate reloading. Now, so goes the nature of the beast. I have reloaded a grillion pieces of 22 Creed brass. I use for myself, I use a standard Hornady factory uh, full length die. Now, when we first started, when there wasn't no 22 Creed brass available, I used a six Creed bushing die and I used, I have 249. Or 0. 0.249, 0. 0.250, and 0. 0.251, which I have more than that. But those are the main ones you need. If you're going to get bushing die for neck sizing or full length with a bushing die, 2, 0. 0.249, 0. 0.250, 0. 0.251, figure out which one you want to do. I mean, it, it depends on the thickness of the brass and all that stuff. Those three probably going to cover you for most stuff, and 0. 0.250 is probably going to cover you for most everything. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that because I just don't. I don't get into yeah <laughs> I, don't, I just don't get into all that crap my personal ammo me personally yeah <laughs> standard horny full length sizing die roll from there and like i said if i have to use some six grade brass and stuff like that i'm a i'm a one one shot guy i just i don't I don't take my, you know, I know guys that'll neck it down twice on six creed brass, which is absolutely ridiculous. I just put a little extra label on that bad boy. Use a two five Oh point two five Oh row with it, you know, but again, I'm not the guy to talk to. I go simple, simple, fast, effective. That's, that's my thing. And I hate reloading. I yeah. love loading. <laughs> yeah. Hates reloading. It's a pain in my side powder for reloading. I'm not going to tell you. So I am going to give you like some uh, places to go with it. Get on Hodgkin's website or whatever. Get a burn rate chart from Hodgkin's. What they, they typically come out with a new one every year. It doesn't always have like the newest powders, but it's a good place to look and then refer back to your loading manuals uh, with comparable stuff as far as charge weights. And I'm definitely not going to say charge weights on the podcast, but powder range. If you have some powder from uh, 40, is 4064 above market nowadays? It changes every year, by the way. You need to get a new chart every year. 4064 up to 6.5 stay ball. Stay, stay, is it stay ball or stay bill? I don't remember. But anyways, there's your good powder range. Anything in there. <laughs> and basically, you start with 4064 for the shorter barrels. And you all the way to six point five stay ball for the longer barrels. Any of those powders in there? I'm not going to tell you exactly what powder you're going to have to wait and get the book. Uh, I can tell you what some favorites are. Varget, if you can find it, forty sixty four. H forty three fifty, super popular. Six point five stay ball, super popular. Uh, I mean, those those are probably like some of your more favorite ones. I'm just going to kind of cap it right there. Anywhere in that velocity range of powders basically that like i said it goes from fastest faster burning to slowest burning any anything in there uh again i'm not gonna tell you any charge weights and all that stuff just not gonna happen so leading into barrel length uh this is a another hugely common asked question what barrel length is ideal i found that i was not the biggest fan of a 16 inch uh, but the 18 inch is pretty optimal 18 inch, 20, 22, 24 and 26. If you want to shoot some long, heavy suckers, it's steel targets, uh, you know, velocities within those barrel lengths. Now my 16 inch, I had two 16 inch burn up one. I've still got my one in nine. It's probably right there on the end of its barrel life, but I use my one in nine 16 inch barrel for specifically for 60 grain tmks and i'm actually about to be out of them which is sad uh i run them at 3500 feet per second now that's probably a little bit of a hot load but i only shoot it during the winter jumping right into the reason why i don't recommend 16 inch that often is because case capacity like you're going to be looking around for most of your projectiles and that you know which obviously the slower burning powder the smaller 
ball powders, you can get more powder in there. But for that, like, Vargant to H4350 range, the, you know, the larger kernel powders, you're probably going to be looking at like 38 to 40 grains of powder, which is going to be pretty standard loading. You know, again, don't go off this. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's what your capacity is going to be looking like. Within that capacity range in the burning powders and the size of projectiles, a uh, 16 inch, if you're not run suppressed, may, with the slower burning powders, may be a fire breathing dragon. I don't know because I don't shoot unsuppressed, but something in the 16 inch barrel range and down, you really want that around max of like 33, 35 grains cartridge case capacity. 18 inch, that 38 and more cartridge capacity it's kind of ideal uh good burn rates and so on and so forth you're not wasting powder essentially 18 inch my my current favorite is an 18 inch one and eight uh one and eight twist i'm running 75 grain eldms primarily just because i had a bunch and they're relatively inexpensive at oh i can't remember now 33 or 3400 i probably should have wrote that down 33 or 3400 feet per second uh, does fantastic that projectile relatively high bc for a 22 cal projectile holds its velocity and energy at longer ranges just fine it's great 20 inch oh here's a here's an easy way to go about it for every inch of barrel just say 25 feet per second velocity it's pretty simple you know but again if you're reloading yourself, <laughs> you can kind of do whatever you want. Just know that the harder you run them, the less barrel life. And then you better be careful with some of those powders. Uh, like a powder like H380, a uh, pretty favorite among old timers in their 2250s. I think it's H380. Highly temp unstable. I hate that powder. I wouldn't recommend it for 22 Creed whatsoever. You want to run the most stable powder you can get your hands on in something like a 22 grade, especially when you're pushing those boundaries with high velocities. Uh, while we're on barrel lengths, I'm going to talk about barrel twist. And I briefly talked on it a while ago. I have a 1 in 12. We run 55s and 60s. It shoots freaking fast and lights out. 1 in 10, your optimal projectile weight is going to be what we found that you can run anywhere from 55s up to 70s well probably 73s but the optimal as far as accuracy goes from 18 inch barrel all the way up to 24 inch barrel one in 10 twist optimal uh projectile range was that 68 to 70 grain like they shot the best time after time and i mean this was when i was testing these this is back when you can get everything and i tested every like every projectile and get my hands on in that range and it would just shoot one whole groups pretty much in that 68 center grain range. Uh, a little bit opened up on the lighter side, a little bit opened up on the 73. It will shoot a 75, but it's not, it's just not optimal. Uh, you really step up to the one and eight twist at that point. Uh, and you're going to be looking at, so in the 70 grain projectile, you're going to be looking at uh, your maximum probably about 3750. Now you can push it a little bit harder, but I wouldn't recommend it. And you better watch what projectile you put in it. If you're running the 24 inch, one in 10 twist, run them right up there at 3750. Because projectiles like the Hornady Boat Tail Hollow Point 68 grainer, fantastic varmint cartridge, uh, varmint projectile. Works well way down in, in the speed, like way down in the speed range. But when you push it past, I think it was a uh, 3600. Push it past 3,600 and 10 twist barrel. It'll splash up close, 100%. It's just, it's way too much velocity, way too many RPMs. Because when you, the faster you push them, even though it is one in 10 twist, the faster you push it, the higher the RPM is uh, as it exits the barrel. So just keep in mind, you want a hardy 75, 70 grain projectile for those, run those mock speeds, like 24 inch barrel, 3,750 plus. Uh, you want something like a Nozzler RDF which has worked fantastic for us. 70 grain nozzle are RDF. Now, what you can do is get down in that 18 to 20 inch barrel, one in 10 twist, shooting those 68 grain hornets, and it works fantastic because you're still getting a 
35, 50 ish, somewhere around there. And that's still plenty flat shooting for most of your hunting needs. And that's a fantastic projectile with a cap of again, 3,600. I'd probably keep it down 35, 50 and slower, like all the way down to, you know, muzzle losses around 26, 2,500 feet per second. I mean, it still performs, you know, great. That's why we like to use that one when we can get it. Uh, one and eight twist, um, ideal for 73 up to 88 with the sweet spot seems to be that 75 grain range, uh, 75 and 80. You probably your most commonly used one is the one and eight twist with a 75 grain projectile. And like I said, I've shot plenty of 88s out of them. It works fantastic. Even in the shorter barrels. Uh, 85.5 burgers, the 80 grain burgers, you know, there's tons of different nowadays. There's tons of different heavier projectiles because of the Valkyrie and the 22 Creed. A lot of people have come out with these high BC 22 cal projectiles and your eight twist again, depending on the length of the barrel. Like if you wanted to do a 16 inch for some reason, one and eight, you couldn't run like nineties out of it. It's probably just not going to do work. Well, probably work fine for shooting a deer at hundred yards. But if you're going to go shorter, keep in mind, typically you run a little bit faster twist barrel. But 18 inch, one and eight, stabilizes 75 is fine. It's fantastic. My longer barrels, 24 and 26 inch, one and eights, run 88s just fine. And my one and seven and a half, I think it is, or maybe it's one and seven. I can run up to 90s pretty easily in that one. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, there's websites like Burger and all that have uh, twist rate calculators, all that stuff. Or again, reach out to someone that has some 22 grades. Find out what they're running. Kind of find out what you want to do with it and what velocity you want to be at with what BC projectile and so on and so forth. It's it's not it's not hard. Uh the next question. Do you have any questions leading up to that? Um no, I tuned out there because I know. Was, you're uh, anybody gets, anybody who's still listening to this. It, it gets very I mean, this is just hitting the wave tops. Yeah, I know. You have to understand I have pages this thick of data for this that's that's why you that's why you load my ammo <laughs> so i'm again i'm just i'm i'm really trying hard just to hit the wave tops but there, a lot of these were questions and you know how i am with the questions but anyways yeah i digress i think that wave tops done been <laughs> crested over yeah and we covered uh velocity expectations uh i'm just gonna hit these numbers really fast again 18 inch, one and eight twist, 75 grain projectile, 3300 ish, 3400 if you really want to lean on it. Uh, 24 inch, 3500 ish, 24 inch, one and 10, 70s, 3750 or more. 24 inch, one and 12. I had 55s going over 4K. Uh, like I said, if you have any que- uh, any thoughts, questions, just feel free to reach out to me. And yeah, it's a, just comment. I mean, you can. Yeah, you pretty know. good practice to just add 25 feet per second per inch. It, it's not set in stone, but it's pretty good practice. Uh, we covered barrel life, when to clean them, all that. Building a new gun, what are the options? Or buying a new gun, whatever. I know at one time Horizon. Horizon's kind of there, they're in terms of. Off the rack. Someone super smart gave him a good idea on that. Just saying. I couldn't imagine who. As far as like off the rack guns, uh, that's they really come out your with go-to. the. I don't know if they still do them. They were doing them like last year. The Bagara actioned twenty two Creedmoor for like twenty five hundred. They were, yeah they were now you know Horizon does custom rifles just like everybody else but they. Someone gave a really good idea. That's all I'm going to say about that. They come out with one around two grand. Now, and they were, were those on RSR? I'm not sure. I feel like they were. I don't know. But they're, you know, they're like. They're pretty readily available everywhere at one point. You know, off the rack custom. Yeah. You know. Semi custom. Yeah, Semi custom, yeah. So. Around they, that two to 2,500 at the time, which I don't know what they got nowadays. Uh, And then from there, it's like custom manufacturers. Uh. We had, you, you know, always, I mean, if you're in the hand loading already, if you're already in this long range, if you're already into wildcatting, prefits, obviously. Yeah, prefits are the thing for sure. So you can get you can get whatever you want on the prefit end uh, or, you know, custom. And so there's also cheaper options, cheaper routes to go, but you should always definitely know a gunsmith or get familiar with a gunsmith and talk to them before you make any decisions. We have 
multiple times we have taken 20 to 50s and just had them rechambered 20 to Crete. Now, uh, Tika used to do a one in eight twist, 20 to 50, but I hadn't seen one in a while. I'm really upset. That was a great donor raffle. There was the, they did a run of the 22 Creed fixed barrels. Yeah. I'm I should have got one. I know. I'm mad I didn't. Uh, again, on the cheap end, let's start with any 22 to 50 can be rechambered to a 22 Creed. But you need to know what barrel twist you're going in with. Because a lot of your, a lot of your 20 to 50s are going to be 12 and 14 twists. Now, there are some that are 10 twists. And I think Bagara might do a nine twist. But again, Tika for a while did a eight twist, 20 to 50. That would be ideal. Or if you have a old 308 boat face, which is 243, 20 to 50, 308, 6.5 creed, 6 creed, all those kind of you know calibers of 308 boat face. If you have an old action laying around, you can get a barrel put on it. And again, like he said, there's prefits. You can jump into that ball game. You could talk about that for... 14 days because there's yeah. so many people doing it now. It's not that hard. They're making it easier and easier. Or you can go full custom build. So as far as cost, again, reach out to your local gunsmith. Typically, a chamber job is like 250-ish and goes up from there. You know, if you already have a 2250, like 9 or 10 twist or 8 twist even, and you want to get rechambered to a 22 Creed, that's an easy route to go. All the ones we've done, and like we've done quite a few Ruger Americans have helped buddies get set up with Smiths and all that. And I've actually, uh, one of my 18 inch 12 twist 22 creeds was a 20 to 50. Uh, and we just rechambered it. No problems shooting, shooting wise. Like they're still accurate if the Smith is, does a good job. I mean, it's that simple. Probably wouldn't rechamber a barrel that's burning out. Just put a new barrel on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. Basically, anywhere from, I'm going to say $300 up to, you can buy a gun watch for 10, 14 grand. You can get a custom version of a of the the one-off custom gun works done in a 22 grand. <laughs> but you have to be cool for that. So, sky's literally the limit. I never thought about that. So, that, that one specifically is that in, in te, uh, integral? Yeah. You're going to burn that barrel out so fast? Yeah. No, it probably never is. Well, that one probably not. But what I'm getting at is like... <laughs> Theoretically, they I wonder, don't sell those to people who shoot. I wonder. I wonder how that works with the uh, with the integrated suppressor. Like, how viable is it for you to get a new? Because the I way the way that those ones are designed, Let's just burn it up and see what happens. I want my new barrel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I bet there's no there's no guarantees on that barrel. Uh, we covered AR, covered barrel links. Well, I have a question for you. Um. I mean, that's, that's basically the hill tops. Uh, yeah. Ask so, me any questions you think we should cover. You've obviously, you've covered the, uh, you've covered hunting. Now, what about 22 Creed just for long range shooting? What are your thoughts on it? <clears throat> A lot of people are using it. I mean, I, pre COVID, I shot mine all it, the time. Advantages, disadvantages. Range. I mean, low recoil, cheaper projectiles. Yeah. Uh, when you get surpassed that study, especially getting up into the eighties, especially all the eighties are available nowadays. We're talking about fairly high BC projectiles going again. It's very subjective because you know, barrel lengths and all that, but going in excess of 3,200 feet per second. Yeah. Uh, those high BC projectiles, pretty phenomenal performers out to a thousand yards. Yeah. I mean, again, if barrel life is a worry, uh, probably go with a six five. I mean, it's always you know, it's gonna have a better barrel life. But if recoil and projectile cost, I mean, nowadays you could probably save. Well, we need to math this. You could probably save enough on projectiles going with the twenty two grade to compensate for the barrel life. I'd be curious. We should math this. Yeah, well, I mean. You're probably going to get, I'm going to say at least bare minimum, you're probably going to get three times barrel life out of 6.5 Creed, as you are 22 Creed. But how much more expensive is like a 130 EODM as opposed to a 75 grain EODM? Yeah. You know, probably more than three times at this point. I don't know. Maybe not be quite that much. I think the question at the end of this all is, you know, you cover 22 Creed. 
but it's like, is the juice really worth the squeeze here? Because you have, obviously you can't get an off the shelf rifle as easily. You know, you're not really going to get factory loaded ammo. Um, you know, what point is it worth it? I think it is, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, it seems like it's, it's probably w- worth it to number one. If you don't reload at this point, it's probably not worth it. Yeah. Uh, that's simple as that. Now, if they Sammy spec it or Sammy spec it or, you know, cause I'm curious, obviously, if, I'd be, I'd be really curious to see what that, the Hornady ammo would cost on it, you know, on 22 grade nowadays, who knows? Yeah. But pre pre, uh, COVID, I guarantee it'd have been like $25 for a box 20. See, that'd be, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. Pre COVID. I mean, what, what was pre COVID? What was, uh, 22, uh, 50, 22, $23. I think up to 30 sometimes, depending on the, so it'd have been just a hair more probably. Okay. So yeah, that's, I mean, it seems like if you're really wanting that, that bleeding edge of performance, if you're a 22 cal fan and you want something that's going to dominate over the 22 to 50, yeah. The 22 Creed is a logical choice. Like, I like 22 to 50, but do you like 22 to 50 plus? <laughs> and, oh, one thing that we didn't bring up, 22 to 50 AI or 22 Creed. 22 Creed more all day long. <laughs> no one likes the fire form brass. If you like the fire form brass, you're, you're a, so- a crazy person. Yeah, you're a sociopath. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, there's also hydroforming, which is a huge mess. And then there's the cream of wheat bullshit. I don't want to do that to my barrels. It, can we the ais are fantastic but it's also like i mean obviously ackley was ahead of his time you know i'm gonna give you i'm gonna give you an opportunity here but the new ackley is the creed more cartridges <laughs> um no testing don't get me started stupid i just i like you know neck turning no testing stupid you know, fire forming. This brass. should be a whole nother podcast. It really should. This is, so a, this is what we call it. Hated a, by multiple people. <laughs> but like, I love that Litz video he posted the other day where it showed the, the bullet exiting the barrel, but like right. how much like, yeah, it's, it's just, <laughs> just give no, us, give us a teaser. Give us a teaser in your opinion. No testing is stupid. It's a waste of time. What about ladder? Okay. Stupid rank one. I guess there's four things for most stupid. To the least most stupid. Um, <laughs> turning like next. Uh, most. No testing. Most. Ladder testing. Most. Oh, you're just going to do that. <laughs> just, all of them are stupid. It's funny. The, so much- the links that people will go to for accuracy. Well, it's technically precision. But like they will do. It's like stand on one leg when you reload it. Like yeah. it's absurd. It's stuff has gotten so, so good nowadays. Then a lot of that stuff's irrelevant. And I, and I understand why some people know tests and ladder tests and so on and so forth, because they don't have places like we have to test right out the freaking window. And so you have to have a way to, so you're saying is their city folk develop ammo. The not city, necessarily the city folk don't know, don't know nothing about, no you have to have a ammo. way to develop ammo and take it somewhere. And to, they wanted to get some sort of data to have a place to go. Yeah. Here's the thing. <laughs> we, most people will do like one, two rounds per charge weight. And then they'll, ch- they'll chart it out. And if there's like any sort of flat spot, that's a node. Are you ready? You ready? <gasps> and they're doing it all on a fresh barrel. Yes. Stupid thing number one. Stupid thing number two. Next time, if you believe in this node testing, mumbo jumbo. Do your practices. You know, two rounds, whatever the one round, two rounds, whatever. You know, have your bar chart, uh, bar chart, bar graph. Do the same test again. Just go ahead and just let me know where that that node is. It's going to be somewhere totally different. There's not enough data there to actually understand anything about your node and all that crap. Here's here's the deal. I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not going to tell people how I do my. Yeah. <laughs> if you want that, pay seven ninety nine a month. Subscribe to Wade's Only Fans. Uh, what was the other thing you just mentioned? I was uh, no testing ladder. No, you said something right there at the end. What was it? It was probably controversial. It was whatever it was. It was one of those things that I don't believe in. 
Stupid. Turning next? De- n- no. Awful. Uh, seed, uh, seating, bre- uh, seating pressure? Seating depth. Oh, seating pressure. Yeah, that's the newest thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, I, I agree with you. It's, it's a bunch of people who like, oh man, but I have to drive two hours to my range. So like, what am I going to hyper fixate on while I'm home? On, yeah. You know. You know what? I'm going to give people a little nugget. How about that? If you're in the scenario where you have to go somewhere to test your ammo and then go back and all that, here's what uh, you buy do. Alley Munitions at AlleyMunitions.com. Number one, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did it for you, folks. Number two, if you're hand loading and you have to go somewhere else, or even if you have to do it at home, do this. Trust me. Number one, if it's a brand new rifle, don't start load development. That's dumb. <laughs> load, if you have to load your ammo, I recommend just using some cheap factory ammo. But if you like, I want to load my ammo and I want to fire form this new brass, that's another thing, whatever. Either just do a generic load that you know is not going to be overpressured or buy factory ammo, run anywhere from 100 to 150 rounds to that thing before you even start load development. I don't care what it is. Do that because the basically the barrel's getting seasoned, broken in, and everything else. Your velocities are going to be all over the place in the beginning life of that barrel until it gets essentially smoothed out. And then that's... I was going to say, when your load development's about, you're like, I usually takes me about 100 rounds to get a good load work done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even mess with it. 100 to 150, maybe even 200. It just depends. Like, you know. It's going to vary. Uh, put some rounds down range. Get comfortable with the rifle. How about that? Get everything set up properly. Get that'll, your that'll probably help you a lot more than some of the other stuff. Exactly. Uh, again, if you don't have factory ammo or if, if you have some components, you want to fire form new brass, which is another funny one. Just load a generic load. There's generic loads for almost everything. Just load a generic load spend some time in the range it doesn't matter if it doesn't shoot good get the barrel war in and i don't mean burn down the barrel i mean just shoot it shoot your rifle get familiar with the rifle when you get an adequate amount of rounds down the tube then start some load development but here's the thing stop with all this again i don't even do the increments and point whatever's well, that's stupid too to be yeah i mean yeah <laughs> most people that are doing that probably don't even have a skill that actually reads that properly anyways but that's neither here nor there get you a starting charge weight get you ending charge weight load one round per grain okay you follow me i'm talking to you <laughs> oh sorry what was that i want to make sure you can follow so i'll make sure i'm putting it out there correctly. oh yeah because if i can follow it everybody can follow it load i'm gonna load Say my starting charge weight I want to test is 36 grains. Yeah. And my ending charge weight is 41 grains. Cool. I'm going to load one round per grain. Okay. I'm going to shoot them. And then break down from there probably. Makes a lot of sense. So if I hit pressure, the slightest pressure sign, like a flattened primer or ejector swap, that's the faintest pressure sign at my ending charge weight. It takes a little overpressurization in the air. <laughs> depending on the powder and you should know what you're doing enough to know if this powder <laughs> that is... would probably help with all this if you know what you're doing before you start that'd be you should great know enough about the powder to know just about how temp stable it is i wouldn't even recommend using it if it's not but quote unquote temp stable we'll get into that another day uh say i hit slight amount of pressure at 40 grains again use your best judgment it's your face, whatever. Your gun. If I'm loading for myself, as soon as I hit pressure, I back off one grain, load five rounds, shoot those five rounds. If it's a promising group, hey, I'm going to load 20 more because none of this shit makes the difference if you don't have actual data and actual data takes multiple tests. I'm going to shoot those five round groups through the 20 rounds. And if it all stays within great groups, my gun likes that load. Yeah. Problem, it's over. But you could have gotten point zero. It's stupid. That's stupid. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> There's only ever in my life. If okay, if I get down to where I need to start doing that, I feel like I need to start doing. I'm abandoning that load. Yeah, it's not even a thing anymore. It's going away. There are certain powders and certain scenarios where I've like maybe two loads ever. Where I went 0.5 of a grain to 
to bleed out just a little bit more velocity. Yeah. And that wasn't because of accuracy. That was solely, dude, I want this thing. Just to, It was a, like a super, I'm just going to call it for what it is, a shitty powder. Then we're talking about loads for myself. A shitty powder that is that unstable, essentially, that 0.5 of a grain of ball powder. I mean, people that know, know. A ball powder, 0.5 of a grain can mean a lot more velocity. And it was my own stuff, like bleeding edge type stuff. But, it, you know, stop with all the points and all that, you know, it's stupid. Like, if, you're, if your scale don't even read that, What's the point of even doing it? Because that's that that, that brings us to the next thing. <laughs> Most people on the internet, particularly forums, who are talking about any of this are full of shit. Yes. Do not believe a velocity you see on the internet. No. Because everybody's not. Everybody's an expert. Yes. Um, but like how much have they ever loaded really? Exactly. So, I mean, a lot of this these practices stemmed from a leg- legitimate yeah, yeah. place. What are your qualifications, m- sir? Me? Yeah. I just I just load a few rounds here and there. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think that's a fair question to some extent because I'm sure some people could be like this fucking asshole drinking his monster. Um, I've loaded a lot of ammo. <laughs> like, but not even like. There's one. There's a difference between like, oh, I have some rifles that I load for. You've deliberately loaded ammo and kind of like you said earlier, you touched on this, like doing something once is, is just doing something once, but it has to be repeatable. You have to be able to do it over and over again. Over and over and over and over. over. So you've done a lot of low, a lot of hand loading. We don't, we don't use progressives around here. We're old fashioned folk. Um, we're simple. You have loaded a lot of ammo deliberately testing across at nauseum, more guns than most people have ever even seen. And, uh, that's probably true. Across a wider variation of twists, barrel lengths, calibers, like at nauseum. Yeah, and so it is fun though. I get to shoot a lot. <laughs> well, it, it, it's fun, and it's it's kind of a tinker because you never you never really done right. No, I'm never. And so when I mean new shit comes out every year, especially powders. Like seems that's like powders why I, come out. That's why I don't get these time. old school guys who are just like my 308. I can get bulk uh, Polynesian M80 ball. <laughs> like, isn't it fun that new stuff comes out and like you get to tinker with it? it? I mean, again, that's why it's taken another reason why it's taken so long to get all this data for 22 Creek is I'm very thorough with my testing and new stuff has come out. Like brass has gotten better. Yeah. Uh, new powders have come out, new projectiles, like no, it never stops. And when we do put this book out, I want it to be like the most thorough thing ever. Like I want it to be your one-stop shop for everything. 22 Creek. Same thing with six R. Well, and that's, and that's kind of the big thing is, you know, there are some people who just load for themselves, but you know, when it comes to what you're saying, you, you strike a balance and naturally, which is like what's effective, but what's not like too yeah. much of a pain in the ass. And so you get those people out there doing the stupid shit. And it's most of the time, it's kind of like a, what do they call that? Like, I forget, like not witchcraft, but like, it's like where you have like the thing that like, Oh, I always do it that way. So I always have to do it that way. Yes. And uh, let's talk about this on one podcast. And I need to, I, awesome. I never, I've watched some of his YouTube stuff. I've never listened to him on a podcast. You should uh, listen to snappers had podcast. I think it's called the everyday snapper. Yeah. Uh, with what's his name? Frank, Frank. the, uh, no BS BC podcast with Brian in, uh, I can't pronounce the name. Emil, the wind calling God. Yeah, I think well, it's Emil. Well, that's kind of like that's the problem I run into is I I, I hang around you too much, um, for sure. And I like think that's a positive thing. Well, in some ways, but like I forget how, like even just through osmosis, how much information I picked up off you. And it's like you talk to people, and like most people have no idea. So like, you know, even like evaluate even people who like should know more. Right. Like they're only ever looking at BC, but they're not even taking velocity into account. Right. And like there are people who are out there who are like six, five Creed more. I don't want to use that new fangled fancy cartridge. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, like it's been out for a third of my life. Hornady released it for t- in 2007. And it was probably Wait, a thing for like, it's been around half of my life. <laughs> God, you're such a baby. Yeah. It was, I guarantee you the way things go is it was probably around. And I'm sure we can find it's on the internet. Yeah. Three, four years prior, if not longer. Because I'm sure there were some people at Hornady that were pushing back on this newfangled 
This yeah, fan. Well, and that's what's crazy is like uh, you have all this, you have all these people who are just you know completely unaware, and they legitimately think that like oh that's it's just marketing these all these right. all these new cartridges you know it's it doesn't actually provide any benefit but it's, it's just I, it, it blows my mind and I think so okay a lot of these ridiculous reloading practices probably came from earlier times in F class style shooters where they're literally trying to shoot like ragged hole groups at a thousand yards if that's what i was doing i still wouldn't go to the depths they go because i've shot the same kind of groups using a very streamlined process because when they first started doing things that way components compared to nowadays sucked well yeah you you're having to true all of your things yes versus like to a to an acceptable tolerance where versus now Machining has come a long ways. Well, between there's the machining of each individual part and component, and then there's the actual aspect of the cartridge design being inherently better. And so it's, you're always going to hit a point of diminishing returns. And then I'm sure there was some stuff that now is just wild and like obviously doesn't do anything that back then, like maybe, yeah. maybe it was helping, but weight, weight sorting bullets back then was probably highly pivotal to shooting tiny groups, especially mm-hmm. long range because I mean, projectiles back then sucked. Yeah. Whereas projectiles nowadays, it's complete waste of time in most cases. Now, there are certain projectiles manufacturers that we won't mention that we do do a little bit of weight sorting. Yeah. The uh, At the end of the day, so much more of that variance is going to come down to the shooter versus anything else. More than likely, especially nowadays, like powders have gotten great. Cartridges have gotten great. Projectiles, like BC variation from projectile to projectile has gotten fantastic. More more than enough to cover most people's accuracy. Yes. If you're the guy who needs it, you know you need it. Yes. That's kind of what yeah. it comes down to. So, in closing, we are officially going to have some 22 grade in stock very soon. <laughs> Both. And, uh, uh, yeah, and we're going to have a little bit of brass to sell uh, load packs. Not much, but a little bit. But it's coming, finally. The child slaves are laboring away right now <laughs> as we speak. You're realistically, I'm thinking within a mm, couple weeks before you start seeing it hit the website. We're thinking about those pre orders. Let us know down below what you think. If yeah. you would like to jump on the pre order list or what uh what grains what, what was for initial offering? Definitely gonna be a seventy five grain EODM. Uh we're gonna do some lighter grain stuff like the sixty nine grain stuff, because there are several people out there asking for it. And for sure, eighty five point five burger, and we have a we have a bunch of other stuff. So we're just gonna you know, again, let us know in the comments, uh, what weight or projectile in particular that you would like to see. Our most common for asked for one is gonna be the seventy five ELDM for predator hunting. Uh, mm-hmm. they're gonna we're gonna do some seventy five grain boat tail hollow points for that cost factor. Like we can really get the price down the best we can do on that projectile, and it works great for predator hunting. But again, coming, uh, let's just say mid December to be safe. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna get it out faster if we can. I mean, that's just all there is to it. It is Alpha Munitions OCD brass. Now, before you, some of you people that jumped on Alpha Munitions way back when they first came out with twenty two grade brass and they had pressure issues, like it was pressuring out way, way too early before it could build any velocity. I like to tell people like the I call it the Gen One Munitions brass. Uh, I've got some that's got 14 reloads on it, and it started finally cutting loose to the velocity I think it should have at uh, resize number seven. But this stuff, I've already been testing on it. It's fantastic. It's no longer an issue. It's going to be great. Great brass. Yeah. <laughs> the best. It's I really good. wish I could do a dog. A lot of brass. A lot of brass. <laughs> Again, I've been testing it. It's It's pretty awesome. I mean. Uh, if you're familiar with the Peterson brass in my my in-house pressure testing, it actually performed better than the Peterson. That may ruffle some feathers, but I don't give a shit. Uh, it actually performed better than Peterson on uh, pressure testing. Well, any questions, comments? Please like and subscribe. Yeah, I comment. <laughs> you know, I like I like to see comments about yeah uh, feedback. But particularly if you have any questions on Twenty Two Creed, he'll be in the comments answering them. Um, 
if honestly though, I'd like to know like what are you know we're getting close to Christmas, we're getting close to really predator hunting season, but like what are you know next episodes like kick us some ideas? Yeah. Um, what do you guys what do you guys want to see? We'll start getting some more people in here again. Yeah, it's weird time of year. It's kind of everybody's like super busy. Everybody's super tired of listening to us. Probably. Yeah. Well, that's a good place to end it. See you guys next time.